This is episode 18 of the History of Podcast. I'm Robert. And I'm Emma. And today we will be talking about the history of Earth moving machines. Now, before we dive in, like always, um, just plug in the YouTube channel and the Instagram. Check out our YouTube channel. It's also called The History Of, and our Instagram is called The History Of Podcast. Uh, but first, before we get into the episode, as always, we have the egg carton count, and uh, that is, that's 24 today, so we're growing. I'm sure you can hear that that extra egg carton, just hear that dampening. Mm-hmm. And uh, Emma, about today's episode, Emma was kind of confused when I said I wanted to do this episode. You said I was reverting back to my childhood of Tonka trucks. Essentially, yeah. I was thinking dump I got trucks a, and Tonka trucks. But, I got a little mm, too excited about this episode. You you were a little hype. And that, you know what? That's okay. These machines definitely serve a significant purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they do. I don't know. You just sound like you're making fun of me. They do. First, we need to start with the pyramids. And no, they weren't made by the aliens. Research suggests that the building blocks were dragged across the desert on sleds, and water was poured on the sand in front of the sleds to reduce friction. Yes, for these, uh, for the Egyptian pyramids, the stones were uh, then most likely pushed up ramps. Uh, so those stones that were dragged across the desert, they were then pushed up ramps to wherever they needed to be. Not really surprising. I, but, you know, that's that's the most feasible way to do it. Simple, simple earth moving right there. They got it done. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know what the classic earth moving machine is? What? What's that? It's the shovel. Like, Ooh, just think about true. that. They go way back. Like, there's there's a mention of them uh, in Deuteronomy, De- Deuter- Deuteronomy nice. 2313. Uh, and it says, quote, And thou shalt have a shovel amongst thy weapons, and it shall be... When thou sittest down abroad, uh, thou shalt dig therewith, and thou shalt turn back and cover that which is from thee. End wow. Quote. Are you breaking out the KJV? Uh, wow. I don't, I don't remember what version that was. Well, anyway, everyone has had shovels for a long time. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're also like similar, similar tools, um, but those like hose and all that, but those aren't really earth moving machines. We are, we're here to talk about the, the big heavy stuff, and there are a lot of earth moving machines out there. There's the excavator, and that's the one, it's the, the cabin that sits on tracks, like pretty much most of them. Uh, and it has a big, the big jointed arm and the, the scoop on the end, and uh, kind of, yeah, like the bucket. You know what I'm talking about, Emma? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about, I think. There's the skid loader, and that's the one uh, on tracks with the the bucket in front it's like the bucket is the same width as the the kind of the tractor component and it can lift up like you see it lifting up rocks or i guess sometimes Ooh. dirt it's fairly small compared to the other ones you know what i'm talking about kind of yeah i'm not totally sure but okay kinda well there drift. we one of the links we have uh has a it's a website that explains what all of these are uh if i'm doing a terrible job and uh it it has pictures of all of these so Pretty much all of these you've seen before. I might just be doing a terrible job explaining these. There's a there's also the backhoe loader, and uh, that's kind of a hybrid between the excavator and the skid loader. Um, so it's you can have like uh, an attachment on. It's kind of the same as the skid loader with the bucket in front, but then it also has a jointed arm that comes out the back with a scoop. So it's like a has it serves a double purpose. And then there's the well-known bulldozer. And I, th- I mean, I think we all know what that is. Yep. And of course, there's the fancy pantsy dump truck. And <laughs> that one's pretty much common knowledge, too. If you have not seen a dump truck, I'm so sorry. Like, you get, get out of the house. live under a rock. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So all these machines we just described uh, are pretty similar, and they all stem from the basic tractor. Um, the earliest known mechanical earth mover was the steam shovel um and it it was invented in 1835 by william otis and this helped when the u.s got the railroad fever in the mid 1800s definitely with the the uh, transcontinental railroad um and as the name implies this was during the steam age when everyone was obsessed with making everything with making everything steam powered and uh we'll we'll discuss further improvements uh in the technology kind of 
kind of down the line. Now, Otis's patents expired 40 years later, leaving much of this technology free game for what would be some founding companies in the industry like Vulcan Ironworks Company and Marion Steam Shovel Company. Anyway, the steam shovel looked like a train car with an arm and bucket, and it was on wheels, not tracks. And a lot of the early... Um, the early earth moving machines were actually like they ran off of railroad tracks and then mm. they they helped build the railroad but I think they had to like be on the tracks that's ironic yeah and uh, we'll, we'll but we'll talk about tracks in a moment different kind of tracks um, but the the very first excavator arm with scoop um, similar to the steam shovel uh, that used hydraulics was built in the 1880s by Sir W.G. Armstrong and uh, most of its functions were actually operated with cables, um, but it was it was still technically the first hydraulic excavator. It was kind of a hybrid. Mm. Um, and then we'll also come back to uh, hydraulics. Um, just just kind of trying to stick it stick with the timeline though. The next big jump forward was tracks around the wheels. They improved traction and didn't sink into the dirt. The Holt Manufacturing Company experienced this problem and tried to fix it by putting bigger and bigger wheels on their tractors, that, but clearly that didn't. That is impractical work. Yeah. To fix the problem, Holt developed the crawler tracks in 1904 and started selling them in 1906. While this was the first set of crawler tracks put into practice, designs for the concept go back to 1770. The technology just wasn't there yet. Yeah, and when we are talking about tracks, so the first, the the one earlier we were talking about was on railroad tracks, and uh, this is now like the the you know the the belt that goes around mm -hmm. the wheels, um, that you even have on, you really think of tanks now, having those. But uh, interestingly, a similar technology called the chain track was being developed in England at the same time uh, by David Roberts and R. Hordensby. And uh, it wasn't very successful in England, so the rights to the chain track uh, were sold to the Holt Manufacturing Company mentioned just earlier. And what's even more interesting is that the, the chain track got some ideas for the tank uh, flowing in Winston Churchill's head. So in World War I, uh, when the British Army wanted tanks, they actually bought Holt in 1914. If only they had... So they... they bought back the the company that they had just sold the technology to like if if only they had listened to first you know what i mean because they they tried to sell this technology really hard and it just didn't they just couldn't i'm pretty sure they sold one and that's why they sold it so it just it just didn't go necessary to mention at this point in time heavy machines were gas powered and their attachments were manipulated with cables in 1925, the Holt Manufacturing Company merged with the CI Best Gas Traction Company. The merger became the Caterpillar Tractor Company, the most recognizable name in the industry. After this, the conversion um, from cable to hydraulics was the next big deal, and uh, several machines uh, worked as hybrids between the two, slowly converting to hydraulic uh, until... Uh, one excavator called the DMAG. Ooh, this is going to be tough. Uh, so DMAG was the company, the DMAG Hydraulic Bagger. Looks like it, yeah. I think that's German. Uh, came out in 1954, and it was the first fully hydraulic excavator. And uh, it, it looks a lot like the ones we have today. Mm. Now, this is necessary to mention. The hydraulic press was invented in 1795. And some of the technology was there, but the technology... Uh, to put the pieces together was not. Yeah, they're just yeah, missing some puzzle pieces. Bulldozers and dump trucks are in somewhat of a different category than excavators. And uh, the, the first speculated origin of the word uh, bulldozer was bulldoze, uh, which was first used around 1800, and this referred to some sort of punishment or intimidation, um, really in a military interrogation context. And after that, in the late 1800s, a bulldozer referred to someone carrying a big handgun. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> also, in the late 1800s, to bulldoze meant to push a high volume of things out of the way. Uh, I bet you can see where this is going. Yeah. And bulldozers follow roughly the same timeline as the excavator type uh, with the development of tracks and hydraulics. They used to be just, just tractors. 
uh, with a front blade attachment. That's what it's called. It's the blade. Um, but now they're they're made completely differently from the ground up. Did you know they were used as tanks in World War One? I? I guess they kind of have to to improvise. I'm pretty sure they they like even use them to to push down enemy structures. Oh, yeah. Didn't, didn't you mention something about um, them being used in minefields at one point? Yeah, ago? I think they like they had an attachment to the front um, and to where they could clear a minefield, like an attachment that would pick up the mine. Um, but it was far enough in front that the mine would explode. So it would explode all the mines in the mine. It would just go around and explode all the mines in the mi- minefield um, and clear the minefield. That must have been scary. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's that's enough about bulldozers. And uh, let's talk a little bit about dump trucks. Ooh. Now I really feel like a five-year-old. Tonka trucks. The first dump trucks uh, were actually, they were horse-drawn wagon types. And uh, they were completely manual. So to dump, a latch was released and the contents would fall out the back. Simple enough. Um, People kept trying to push the envelope, as you can imagine, and see just how much a horse-drawn carriage could carry. By the end of the 20th century, carriages were pulled by four horses and loading beds were getting impractically big. In 1904, the first motor-driven dump truck was created. The propulsion was the motor, but the dumping was still manual. And steam engines were a popular engine choice. Mm -hmm. And in 1907, the first hydraulically operated dump truck uh, was created. And that's that's ahead of the curve compared to the other heavy machines. I guess they just couldn't quite... It's a simpler technology, I guess. They couldn't quite... It's more complex with other other earth movers. Um, But by the 1920s, uh, dump trucks morphed into... Uh, trailers that were pulled by tractors. Mm. In 1934, the first vehicle that we might recognize as a dump truck came out and it was called the track truck. And uh, yeah, track truck spelled T-R-A-K-T-R-U-K. Fancy spelling right there. Yeah, I know. And uh, dump trucks became, they became a lot heavier duty in the 1950s. That's when they started becoming as, uh, as robust as they are now. And a company called Fawn, uh, F-A-U-N, made dump trucks that could carry uh, 20 tons of payload with only 180 po- horsepower. And that Ooh. that blows my mind. That's kind of crazy. Like, that's a regular car. Like, the horsepower of a regular car now, carrying 20 tons of payload. Well, you can imagine where our dump trucks went from there. And that puts a bow on our episode about earth-moving machines. If you have any questions or comments about the information provided in this episode, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day. And you've got to promise me something. Never stop learning.